Men in Black has given us villains like Edgar and Boris, who are not among the prettiest of villains, right? But then it also gave us Serlina, the Kylothian, whose beauty is as lethal as her numerous tentacles and sharp teeth. This pretty woman is all but pretty on the inside and houses thousands and thousands of wormy tentacles that are just waiting to drain the life out of you. Furthermore, she's got super amazing shape-shifting and regenerative abilities. She eats human food and humans whole and has more connections with a few real world creatures than you'd think. So, in this video, we will explore all these aspects of Serlina Zath and more. So let's begin, shall we? But before we go into our explanation, we have just a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. It's just a small click for you, but for us, it means an awful lot. Thank you very much. Now, let's begin. What alien species does Serlina belong to? Before we get into the alien race and its various details, let's just brush up on MIB2 for better context and understanding. So, the extremely hot and attractive Serlina Zath served as an operative in the Kalothian military. Now, we know she was far from hot in her original form, but let's, can we just not think about that for a second, maybe? Okay, that's probably not going to happen since this is an anatomy video. Anyway, her homeworld had been in a state of war with the Zarthans for the past 50 years or so, and Serlina was tasked by her people to search for the Light of Zartha, a device that could bring victory to the Kylothians. She had been searching for the light for the past 25 years, but to no avail. It's during the events of the movie that she learns about getting tricked into a wild goose chase by Colonel Chester Phillips. No, hang on, that's a different movie. We meant she was fooled by Agent K, and now she wants to kill him. And how? Well, she wanted to squeeze Agent K like a tube of toothpaste. So, Kylothians were an extremely dangerous race of aliens who thought less and killed more. What does the true physical form of Serlina look like? So, when Serlina Zath arrived on our blue planet, she was nothing more than a small worm or eel-like creature. But upon encountering a dog, she revealed her many mouths, which sent the dog running with a tail between its legs. It soon became clear to the Kylothian that she could not travel across New York in her true form and needed to assume the identity of someone, which is when she came across the picture of model Lara Flynn Boyle, who also played the Serlina's human form in the movie. The Kylothian's worm head head opened wide and innumerable smaller serpent-like creatures came out. They form an exact replica of Miss Lara with the black lingerie and everything. And Serlina uses this disguise right until the climax. The climax of the movie, that is. Interestingly, because the worms that made up Serlina's frame could replicate the model's skin colour and the colour of her lingerie, it's safe to say that the worms themselves were metachronic in nature, meaning they could change colours like a chameleon or an octopus. Now, apart from Serlina, there have been no Kylothians in any of the men in black media but we've seen enough of her to figure out the details about her kind. The filmmakers wanted to portray her as a neural root that would have had a bulbous head resembling the plant called artichoke. In her true form, she was slimy and wet and had the internal structure of earthly invertebrates. This neural root spreads out to release hundreds of tentacles that can capture victims or help the Kylothian in shape-shifting. Furthermore, the tentacles could detach from the main body of the Kylothian without actually causing any harm. But the true form of a Kylothian can undergo several transformations and may increase its size to extraordinary levels, much like what happened with Serlina at the end of the movie. During the climax, Serlina's true form shed the exterior skin-like covering and revealed a much more grotesque version of itself. Jay was under the monster's grip while Kay was shooting at it. After multiple shots, Kay managed to heavily injure the Kylothian, but the alien had more than one trick up its tentacle. So, in the case of imminent death, a Kylothian can transfer its consciousness into the thousands of tentacles it houses. Serlina's true form ejected the worms which took the shape of her face but J and K took out the big guns literally and annihilated the alien once and for all. What does she eat? How does it work? Right after her transformation into the Victoria's Secret model, Serlina encountered a thief named Creepy, who was oblivious to her true form due to not witnessing her metamorphosis. The man would have soiled his pants if he'd actually witnessed the transformation, let alone even approaching her. Seizing the opportunity, Creepy ambushes her, holding her at knife point and making inappropriate remarks before licking her neck. However, Serlina quickly turns the tables on Creepy, overpowering him and consuming him whole. It all 
happens in a matter of seconds. The entire sequence was a mixed bag of horror and sadistic satisfaction as Serlina comments her attacker tasted good, just as he had remarked about how she tasted. Following this encounter, Serlina's enlarged stomach becomes apparent, indicating that digestion has already begun. Audible rumbling sounds start coming out of her bulbous belly, signifying the ongoing metabolic process. But she was on the clock and couldn't really wait for the digestion to run its course. Furthermore, she needed clothes, and her huge belly was giving away her cover, so she regurgitated the remains of Creepy taking his leather attire to change into. It's obvious that despite being regurgitated, Creepy lost his life. We mean, Serlina wouldn't really want to leave a witness alive. Furthermore, throughout the film, she seems like she was one big foodie, voraciously eating when she needed to, be it human food or humans themselves. Furthermore, she eats when she needs to eliminate threats or enemies. Imagine what would happen if warring nations during the world wars started doing that. Anyway, given the sheer size of her true form, it doesn't take a Batman to deduce that she can eat multiple people and not give two shits after that, literally. How does her shapeshifting work? The Kylothians are master shapeshifters, and they achieve this through the aversion of their neural roots. In the case of Serlina's transformation, her tendrils multiplied, leading to the primary neural root, assuming the appearance of the Victoria's Secret model, adorned in black lace lingerie with the beauty spot and even the lipstick colour. This transformation involved growth and interwining of the neural roots, resulting in a formation resembling a woman. During the early stages of the change, the emerging neural root displays various thickness However, as the processes progress, the roots become increasingly slender, eventually resembling capellini pasta. As we said earlier, the neural roots not only replicated the physical attributes of the human form, such as the appearance of the skin, but also incorporated other aesthetic elements like the lipstick, the beauty mark, styled hair, polished nails, and lingerie complemented by high-heeled shoes. Her shape-shifting abilities are so enhanced that she can rapidly reform herself even after sustaining damage. For instance, when Jay Black at her, she swiftly regenerated, assembling her physical form while replicating her clothing and jewellery. Does she have regenerative ability? The Kylothians, including Serlina, possess extraordinary regenerative abilities and they so rapidly recover from physical damage sustained to their bodies that even Wolverine would be jealous. Interestingly, this exceptional capability is closely tied to their inherent shape-shifting nature. After being blasted into multiple pieces by Agent J, she reappears in her human disguise mere minutes later, completely regenerated and unharmed. That's some uber-powerful resilience. The Regenerative capabilities of Kylothians likely contribute to their overall durability, and this interplay between shapeshifting and regeneration is the sole basis of their strength and power in the galaxy. What's up with her multi-purpose tentacles? To be honest, Serlina's tentacles probably have more uses than a Swiss army knife. Throughout the course of the film, she effectively uses her ever-multiplying tentacles for various purposes. Emerging and regressing from her fingers, these tentacles serve as versatile appendages that she uses to trap her victims or wield as a whip-like weapon. Since they are detachable, she can simply leave the victims trapped by the tentacles. You don't need ropes when you're Serlina. In fact, she trapped the entire staff of MIB using her super dexterous tentacles. When she visits Scrad and Charlie's department under her human disguise, the former tries to impress her, but she makes short work of them by sticking a tentacle up their ears. And it serves as a continuous reminder that she shouldn't be messed with. Later, while interrogating an alien at a pizzeria, she slices the uncooperative individual with her tentacles, so the tentacles are not just used to penetrate people's ears, but they can also be used as a, well... But of course, the spectacularly tentacular horror began at the end of the movie, when Jay got trapped in them and struggled to stay alive, while Kay, calm as ever, just spoke to the female lead of the film. Uh, speaking of tentacles, if you're into such body horror, check out the Sam Neill starer Possession. She can survive after being eaten by other alien species. Close to the climax of the movie, Serlina experiences a scary encounter with a colossal worm-like alien known as Jeff. Jeff had been serving the men in black since he was nothing more than a tiny worm infant and shared a rather cordial relationship with the agents. Pursued by Serlina, agents Kay, Jay and Laura find themselves seeking refuge in a subway system. In a strategic move, agent Jay positions himself near Jeff and intentionally drops to the ground. This ensures the gigantic creature can Serlina. However, Serlina is not one to go down easy. Jeff emerges atop a building in apparent pain, but Jay was not in the mood for it and he asked Jeff to return to the subway. It's at this moment that it's revealed that Serlina, having endured the
the ingestion by Jeff undergoes a rapid growth in size, overpowering Jeff from within and then forcefully bursting Jeff into fragments of pieces, resulting in his demise. So it turns out, yes, she can survive by being devoured by other aliens. Can she reproduce? Given the limited information available, it's unclear whether Serlina possesses the capacity for reproduction in a traditional sense, or if Kylothians have unique reproductive mechanisms specific to their species. But we would like to assume that she does indeed have that capacity to reproduce. But then again, she had been on the mission for 25 years before the events of the movie and was obliterated in the end. So, if she didn't mate with another tentacular monstrosity before the events of the movie, Serlina must have died childlessly. Come to think of it, we think she would follow some form of asexual reproduction like fission or maybe oh, something really gross which would involve a male Kylothian. Hmm. Does Serlina have a scientific basis? Well, Serlina basically was a huge aggregation of worm-like tentacles and quite interestingly many real-world worms like army worms, sludge worms, they show the same behaviour. By clustering together, worms can create a formidable mass that deters potential predators. Predators may find targeting and capturing individual worms challenging when they're part of a dense aggregation and that's just one of the reasons why they might exhibit such behaviour. In any case, for army ants who follow a similar pattern, the group ravages just about anything it comes into contact with. Even scorpions and tarantulas are scared to death of army ants. Does she have any weaknesses? Men in Black operatives are equipped with advanced weaponry specifically designed to combat extraterrestrial threats. Although it takes substantial effort, their advanced weapons can weaken and potentially kill a Kalothian like Serena. These weapons, such as the Noisy Cricket and the MIB Shotgun, can inflict significant damage and be fatal for her. It's also suggested in the film that total disintegration is the only conventional method to completely destroy a Kalothian. This implies that Serena can be eliminated if subjected to extreme force or specialised weaponry capable of disintegrating her physical form. She was no longer an intact body in her final form as a cluster of wormy tentacles, and that's when J and K obliterated her. So you see, this is related to the fact that she was only powerful and had superhuman strength and regenerative capabilities when she was an aggregation of multiple tentacles, and once that aggregation no longer existed, well then she became vulnerable. Marvelous verdict. Each of the Men in Black villains has brought their own distinct characteristics and challenges to the Men in Black agents. Serlina stands out with her aggregation of worm-like tentacles, regenerative capabilities, and the ability to shapeshift. Obviously, she was way hotter than any of those other villains. We mean, especially when the other villains included Boris and Edgar. Ugh. Her physical appearance and abilities were something that actually captivated the viewers in more ways than you think. And did you know that Serlina was supposed to have been played by Fomke Jensen, but she had to leave because of a certain family crisis. Do you think she would have done a better job than Lara Flynn Boyle? Or is Miss Boyle irreplaceable as Serlina? And of course, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. So have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone.